and far. In this case, really, they're coming from far away in both cases. Whether you're a Minuteman fan or maybe a Wildcat of Kentucky fan and you can't get into Rupp Arena, you can get in to the Palace of Auburn Hills because our nightcap tonight in the DirecTV Grade 8 Game 2, the top team in the country, Wildcats of Kentucky, take on the Minutemen of Massachusetts. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale. Well, our first game tonight was saw an upset. Michigan State picked off 25th-ranked Arkansas. Now, though, we get a look at what everybody's been waiting for. Number one team in the country, Rick Pitino's Kentucky Cats, and they're loaded. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Brad. They got the whole package. They have size. They have depth. They have athletes. They have great coaches. Coaching. They got the full complement. A coach's dream. This Kentucky team will be special. Well, talking about a coach's dream, how about John Calipari? He's got a dream of a player, maybe the best player in college basketball. Well, you talk about offensive and defensive efficiency. It starts with a dominating player. And in Massachusetts, they have a dominating player. And Mr. Camby, as we see him right here with the quick jam, showing some emotion. And there's the rejection. He's a human eraser. And now he's going to show his ability to take it right to the goal. He's very quick on the offensive board. There he is with the jam. I'll tell you one thing, Brad. Remember this. 93, Carolina was number one. Massachusetts beat them. 94, Arkansas was number one. Massachusetts beat them. Tonight, Kentucky's number one. Can they beat them? We're going to find out. I'm excited, baby. I can tell. Let's find out how preparations have gone for the Minutemen. And we check in with Dan Bonner. Thanks, Brad. John Calipari is very happy that he's got seven guys who saw a lot of time last year back this year. However, they're all playing in slightly different positions. So they've been so far this year a little tentative. John Calipari wants his guys to play UMass basketball tonight. He wants them on the floor. He wants them on the board. He wants them aggressive. We'll have to see how it all works out. Well, they haven't played a game yet this year, but what a way to open up. They go against the top team in the land when we come back. ESPN's presentation of the DirecTV Great Eight is presented by DirecTV. It's personalized TV. And in part by Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. And by Chrysler Plymouth. Watch for the Chrysler Plymouth Championship Challenge. Pick the winner of the Big Ten, Big East, ACC, Southwest, and Southeast Chrysler-sponsored conferences, and you may win a VIP trip to the 1996 DirecTV Great Eight. And Michigan State directed an upset in game one over Arkansas, 75 to 72. And now the nightcap, the number one team in the country, the Wildcats of Kentucky against the Minutemen of UMass. And here's how it looks for John Calipari's club. Can be bright, Dingle. Travieso and Padilla in the backcourt. Well, you know, you look at Padilla, he's got to make the conversion from a second guard, a scorer, to handling the basketball. Will they miss Mr. Kellogg? That is a question we'll see tonight. And for Rick Patino's Wildcats, Mark Pope off to a great start, a career-high 26 points in his last outing. Delk, Anderson, Mercer, and McCarty. He gives him an inside-outside player, Pope. He's able to make the open jump shot. It'll be interesting to see if Camby checks Pope. Frank Scagliata, Larry Rose, and Steve Gordon are our officials. And Rick Pitino in his seventh year in Lexington. John Campari, his eighth. I'll tell you UMass. what, tell you one thing, Brad, there's a big time environment about this game in terms of both clubs. It's got that setting of an NCAA tournament game. Canby won the tip. Won the way. Travieso and Padilla have the ability to make open jump shots, so you have to extend your defense against them. Candy cross-court pass. Tempo really big. It's important for Massachusetts to establish tempo. They want to play a five-on-five -five game more than they want to play up and down the floor. They're already down to 10 on the shot clock. Padilla. They're going to have to hustle just to get a shot now. Right. With one on the shot clock, hits a three. Wow, not a long-range shooter. Dante Bright, it was all USA, All-American out of high school. Well, that's the way to start it, I guess, if you're going to use the full shot clock and now a foul immediately on Padilla. I'll tell you, that wasn't by design, though, because he's not a long-range shooter. He dialed, hey, so I'm going to dial a little ATT, maybe. I'm going to go a little long distance. He had three threes all of last year. <laughs> he <laughs> rifles one up there for the first basket of the night. First basket of the year for Massachusetts. That's right. What a way to open up. Not a bad opening. You open up with Kentucky. It's not Florida International like that. Can you open up with Boy, you're really working. Oh, no teasing. Oh, no teasing. Starting at the baseline, and it's swatted away by Campbell. Campbell sets a reject. He has great timing. And Colt knocks one out of there. 
If they have an opportunity in a running game, they will push it up the court. But if they don't have numbers, they're going to back it out and run a five-on-five -five game. Padilla with Delk on him and the Kentucky man-to-man. -man. Excellent spacing. Look at the man-to-man defense by Kentucky. Again, they use some clock. Marcus Camby in his junior year. Now look at him, number 21. I mean, he's smelling this, baby. He's anticipating. He's no McCarty. You're not getting that off in the lane. This lane belongs to me. Thou shalt not enter thy lane against Massachusetts. But the, uh, the inbound, an air ball, the dingle on the backside there to pick it up, and then it's partially blocked by Anderson. Back from the Cats. And they throw it away. Sloppy beginning so far for Kentucky. They're not the kind of basketball that's preached by Mr. Patino. Can be outside. Padilla, nice tough pass to Dingle. And the follow by Bright. Bright's got five, all five in the game. That's his strength going to the basket. Look at his quick break. And Mercer fouled by Bright. After the score, Kentucky really blows the ball up the floor. They really kick it right out up that sideline and they attack. Last year, John Calipari's club opened up 17-1 on their way to a 29-5 mark and won the Atlantic 10 again. Lost to Oklahoma State in the East Regional Final. And, of course, they lose Lou Rowe, their inspiration, and Derek Kellogg, their point man. Lou Rowe had his big day yesterday in a pro. 14 points, 9 rebounds. Plays right here for the Detroit Pistons. Stopped at the hotel before he left on a road trip to say hello to Mr. Calipari. Here's... One of the guys everybody's been waiting to see, a freshman. He's the real deal. He's got a world of ability. The one thing with Kentucky, he's just part of the puzzle. That's one of the reasons he decided to be at Kentucky, as opposed to being a guy like Amar Berry, who really all the attention comes his way if Georgia Tech gets beat. Mercer doesn't have to carry the load. There's plenty of load around him. And that's a full court pressure. Very quick athletic team on the floor right now. 5-1, UMass. McCarty's so agile for a big player. Both these clubs are so well drilled. And he had to give it up back to Dingle. Look at McCarty up on... Look at a 6'10", playing on the open court defensively. He can do everything well for his side, or anybody's side. To see the national anthem. That's right, and he has. And the shot inside as Camby's got his first bucket of the night. They say he's been dominating play. Look at a steal on it. Inbound to the basketball. But he had tried it a couple of times and came away empty. Hey, Massachusetts is getting a little bit confident here early in the game. Last year, Kentucky, 28 and 5. First in the SEC East and then lost to North Carolina in the Southeast Regional Final. Shot 7 for 36 from the three-point line in that game. That's what sent him home. They couldn't make the three. Yeah. Lob underneath Mercer, got the rim, but couldn't take the ball with him. Padilla comes the other way, Kentucky, three early turnovers and only one point. Canby in low. High sensey right there by Padilla, under control. They're a little bit concerned that he might play under, out of control, but he was under control, out of poise, and he kept it right to Canby. Kentucky was slow out of the gate against Maryland as well. They yes, fell they down were. by nine and then ultimately got rolling. Now look at Padilla. He's going to be under control right now. He says, where's my All-American? i got to go to Camby. You're the superstar. You're the thoroughbred. i got to go to you, Mr. Camby. Help me out. And there he is. And the end, Dr. McCullough. Camby is playing with so much more confidence. I watched him in practice today, Brad. He was scary. That's how good he can be at 6'11". Weeks checked in for the Minuteman, and Jeff Shepard checked in for Kentucky. He's got it around a pick. Shepard has a range as a shooter. He gets to carry him on a air pass. A lot of experience. He started a lot of games last year. Mercer for three. That's the diaper dandy. Everybody in America is rated one of the top high school players entering the college scene. It was a big hunt for him. He said no to Kevin O'Neill of Tennessee. And a touch foul. I think they both right got the shot off as Anderson looked like he reached a hand in there. And if so, that's his second. Kentucky ball. Oh, 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 last year when they blew out Arkansas and they played with such emotion in the Hall of Fame tip off classic. In fact, Camby, when he saw me, he said, I like it that you're here. You had the game in 93 when we beat Carolina. You had the game when we beat Arkansas. And now we're going to be ready to beat Kentucky. That one over Arkansas was a no contest here. 104 to 80. That yeah, was an Eminem right out of the gate. They blew him away. McCarty almost came up with a steal. And Coach Calipari will take it and say, hey, come on, get back here and help out. 
What a great story today when Patino was telling us the story at breakfast about good. the hiring of Calipari. I'll let you document that story. Well, they got down to the point where it was a matter of they could get him, but they needed an extra five grand, and they didn't have it in the coffers, and Patino wrote the check. And said, <laughs> Got that right. Look at Dante right on a baseline. Seven point lead. And Bright. Already the seven. Tony Delk making that conversion to the point guard slot. Big time score is over the 1200 mark in his career. And we got a foul down low. Gonna go on Dingle. I'll tell you, the one thing about Kentucky, you watch them practice, they really have an interesting practice session where there's so much teaching always going on. Don't forget, you can get scores at 10, 30, and 50 past the hour of the ESPN every day, 24 hours a day. Pope misses in close. Nice entry, high-low entry. Shepard with that dump down inside. This Calipari in his finest sledge tonight. He doesn't want to be out. Well, look at the Armani specials this guy's wearing. He doesn't look like he's happy tonight. Not smiling. Look at Calipari on that sideline. He kept screaming at practice, we're going to get beat by 20, by 25, you guys aren't ready to play. Oh, is he kidding? Seven point lead. The mass. Four minutes into the game. Here's where they control tempo with each possession as well. Bright double down low. Nice hustle on defense on the Wildcats. And Tony Delk comes up with a little push. Picks up his first. So nothing going that well for the number one team in the country right now. Just about everything working for the Minutemen with 15.48 to go first half. They lead by seven. Back at the DirecTV Grade A where it is 11-4 early. And the shooting, Kentucky's just not shooting. They've only got one field goal, but only three attempts to show for it. And UMass, 5 of 13. Kentucky rotates out of the man-to-man, -man, goes to the 2-3 zone. Right now, the tempo of this game is exactly the way Calipari has planned in putting a game plan together. But he buries a three. And that's the one area that they're really excellent at. Their guards can knock down the open jump shot. A 10-point early lead. As Dick said, Kentucky started this way against Maryland. They trailed 20 to 9 and then went on a nice 15 to 2 run to start to take command of that game. But so far, they don't show many signs of life here. Delt push by Traviesto. That's his first. I'll tell you, Padillo and Traviesto aren't going to back down from anyone. They're really very aggressive players. They're very confident players. They're almost soulmates. They were both born on the same day, May 9th of 75 in Puerto Rico. That's, <laughs> amazing that, huh? That's an amazing story. And here they are playing together. Dell can it blocked by Camby, the second of the night. And look at him run the court. Look at him. He blocked the shot. But he pulls up. A little bit short on that one. Pope up high to clear. And Mercer waits for help. Excellent job defensively in transition. Massachusetts getting back, making them play five on five. Hope a little authority there, picking up the rebound, and then he's fouled by Camby. Camby with a foul, but already a couple of blocks tonight, and 210 in his career. Well, this is why the NBA scouts like him. Look at the great timing. Now look at him sprinting out. He's making like a sprinter. I mean, it's amazing. He's right out. Wow. And Kentucky's going to be shooting free throws already the rest of the way. 14-48. Remaining first half as Pope steps up. Pope was 9 for 9 in the opener against Maryland from the free throw line. In fact, he was 8 of 11 from the field. But tonight he misses the first one. We saw the numbers on Camby, 13.9 a game. Those numbers are going to go a lot better this year without Lewis Rowe there. Kentucky really struggling here offensively in every facet of the game. And you got to credit the game plan of Massachusetts. Control tempo. Two missed free throws and still a 10-point UMass lead. Remember, Kentucky likes to run with the basketball. We haven't seen a transition layup yet. Camby goes through a double team and the ball comes out and dealt. It's up the loose ball and they say travel. See, Kentucky likes to be able to force the turnover, get out in transition, come off the glass, and go with the basketball. And right now, Calipari's club is doing a heck of a job. As he told me today, he said, we want to make it a five-on-five -five game if we do not have the open break. Yeah, 
also off the inbound. Thought about a jumper over Duck. Lob underneath. That's blocked by Walker. Yeah, good job defensively by Antoine Walker punting on that situation. Kentucky needs a big basket right here. Somebody's got to step up and want the ball. Tony Duck's got to want the ball. He's their key scorer. He's got to want the rock. He's got to come out and get it and say, I've got to make a big play. We need a big play. A foul on Pope underneath. He is prone to early foul trouble, and here he is with two in the first six minutes. He did not get in foul trouble against Maryland. That's the reason he played so many minutes. Well, the one thing Rick can do is he can go to that bench. He has a lot of people he can bring in with a lot of experience. Here comes Jared Prickett, as a matter of fact, even as we speak of it. Well, Prickett only got seven minutes in the last game, but minutes are going to change according to the team they play. Kentucky, one of five from the field and one for four from the line and five turnovers. That's not a normal Kentucky outing so far. Oh, what a nice look. Bright. Jeff Shepard can go a mile high with anybody, and he picks up the foul. Place no matter what, Peach City High School out here. Peach Tree City. Peach Tree City, baby, in Georgia. What an in. And Shepard has great legs and tremendous bounce. He's going to watch the dump down by Dingle. He enters it to Wright. And Wright's got a leg, great lift as well. But there's Shepard. I mean, they were going up. They are rising, baby. They are playing up there in the sky. Hey, Jeff won the state high jump title about three years ago as a high school senior in Georgia. He came flat out. Get up here, right in the free throw line. Hey, how good was Dante Bright in high school? Think about this. He made first team All American along with Robert Rhodes, who's not here any longer, Othella Harrington, Jason Sig, and Corliss Williamson. That was the top five in all USA team. newspapers. Not a bad team. He was on the number one high school team, too. I mean, yeah, last year was on the number one ranked uh, college team for five weeks. They played at Dunbar out of Baltimore, Maryland. They were Michael Lloyd, Keith Booth, and Al Perry from Maryland. Mercer. Trying to get some motion offensively. They've declined in the number of threes they have shot because of the big guys inside. Cricket had it stripped away by Padilla from behind. Sixth Kentucky turnover, and with a 12-point lead, back come the Minutemen. I mean, it's got to be an unbelievable feeling for John Calipari watching the way this game is going because this is the way he charted and planned it when I was speaking to him today. Candy. Double teamed and threw it away. So here's where Kentucky likes to make the big play. Get the ball off the turnover, run the ball off the court. That's Delk's got to make the big play. Short on the three, rebound. Mercer on the follow and now the tip in by Walker. That's one Walker. How good was he as a diaper dandy? Last year he was the MVP. That's right, the MVP of the SEC. That, my friends, includes people like Corliss Williamson and company. He was the most valuable player. Played for this guy, Rick Pitino. And a great tournament with wins over Florida and Arkansas down at the Georgia Dome. Mississippi State wins tonight with the South Florida. Providence has got a heck of a guard, Dodd Shamgod. That's his name. He changed his name. Seaton Hall by Alma Mater would have been good over Mom is. Don't forget coming up, National Football League action special edition Thursday night for you as the New York Football Giants and the Arizona Cardinals. Buddy Ryan's team came from behind and had a win last week over Atlanta. That's the matchup for you. Giants and the Cardinals, 8 o'clock Thursday night. Hey, Brad, it was interesting today at breakfast when we were talking to Rick Pitino, who was making the analogy you can see a turnover on the baseline. You were talking about Notre Dame and how everybody plays at another level against them in football. And the same now with Kentucky. As he said, everybody that plays at Massachusetts is going to give us John Calipari his best shot. He's not trying to convince our kids. People are going to play at another level. Shepard on the lead, give and go. Mercer lost a change of hands on the way up. Oh, and nice now catch. underneath Canby with a catch and off the glass. What a great catch. And to be able to convert that in traffic. A tremendous play by Marcus Canby, the magician. And a chance for a three-point play as well. Came out of connect. Look at him run the court. Look at the timing right now. Look at the eye contact. And then he sneaks right behind Frickett. And there he is, uses the glass. Has the presence to be able to use the glass as he gets behind the baseline. Great and rotation. He caps off the three-point play as well. And this is a 13-point lead by UMass. I've heard of slow starts, but Kentucky's still sitting with a red light here. They are really struggling offensively. And look at the defensive. They're really right up in their face, hustling all the time, giving help. Walker, 15 footer came out. And I mean, when Tyrone Weeks gets in your way, you clear out of there. He's from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. 
but he has got a three. A Trevieso, excuse me. He's going to get a timeout. Rich is going to get a 20-second timeout. There's some trouble right now, baby. And there's some people out here really concerned. 16-point UMass lead. And Rick Pitino showed concern this morning. You said to him, Rick, I've never seen you so tight. And he did loosen up as we went along. And then I saw him later riding the exercise bike at the workout room at the hotel. And he seemed, uh, he said, you know, Calipari was out shopping this afternoon. And he said, I was in meetings. And now my coaches and I are all working out. So he says, what do you think? 30 points they beat us by tonight. He kiddingly said to me, I don't think he thought he was going to be down 16 points eight minutes in. Well, you know, you spot this club 16 and have to come from behind. That's amazing. You look here, struggling shooting 20%, one for four in a free throw line, six turnovers. I mean, right now they have 10 players, but they got to find the right combination that can offset this team because this team is really believing they can win now, Massachusetts. Epps has checked in at the point spot. He's not a spectacular player, but he makes big plays. Epps is the kind of guy that plays at the end of the game. Frees up Tony Dell to be the two guard. There he goes. I really think that's where he belongs. He's a second guard. He's a scorer. I don't believe he's comfortable in that role playing that point guard slot. A little backcourt pressure by Walker. Walker very agile. He and McCarty. See, this is where they have sell. They get the steal. Dell pulls up. And a whistle. Let's see. Working for the tip. They're going to call a foul on Walker. Or on Normal. Maybe. Antoine Walker, his first. Yeah, they got Antoine Walker with that little grab. He's from out of Chicago, Illinois. He was sensational last year. I did that uh, final game against Arkansas when he won the turning MVP. at 23 in that one. 21 against Florida in the game before that. And for a freshman to sort of take over a major conference tournament like he did was sensational to watch. You know, you're just expecting a spurt by Kentucky, but because of the style of play and the way they really control Temple in Massachusetts, it's not that easy to get in that spurt because they're not going to turn the ball over as easily. And you've got to score to be able to get in that pressure, and if you're not scoring, you can't get in that full-court trapping pressure. Well, yes, it was not a good free throw shooter last year, but he buries the first one the other night. And he should be a good free throw shooter. What a job this guy has done. Everywhere he's been, he's been a winner. From Boston University to Providence to the New York Knickerbockers to Kentucky. Got them both. Travieso with five. The lead for UMass is 16. Thanks to Marcus Canby and company. It's 24 to 8. John Carapalli says, I will take it. That's basketball. You talk about playing with emotion, playing with passion. Uh, playing unselfish, being a selfless kind of player, making the extra pass, diving on the floor, taking charges. That is that equalizer that we try to take. Well, they've had it so far tonight, that's for sure. I tell you, what a great story. He's been one of the big Frank Lloyd Wrights, the great architect of a program. That's right, people don't run away. I'm stunned. I can't believe it. Calipari's up 16. He kept crying to us yesterday, whining and crying that there's no way we have a shot here. Look at the numbers. Kentucky 25% and only one for four in the free throw line. Wow. So Massachusetts won 30 and 5 and 92. 24 and 7 and 93. 28 and 7 and 94. And 29 and 5. 95. Lost out of bounds by Walker. Seventh. Kentucky turnover. When you think of that program, Brad, Yankee Conference years ago, here they are playing with all the elites and holding their roles and really having a sensational, sensational run in the Calipari era. Well, 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 there to McCarty. Kentucky three field goals is all in seven turnovers. And a good help defense. Everybody lending a helping hand. And they make, make an eight turnover. Not allowing them to get any good angles. And he just looks at the goal. I have never seen Kentucky as rattled on the Rick Pitino as I've seen him here tonight. And they are well drilled, this basketball team. And the SO on a run, a pull up from 15. Got the roll. Got right in the lane, got the high percentage shot. This, is, this has been a clinic by Massachusetts, a clinic 101 on how to have a game plan and execute it. You know Kentucky will put together a series of runs, but they don't want to get themselves too buried in this half. Swatted away by Candy, is third. Now the lead ahead. Dingle on the run. Delk trying to stop him. And McCarty pulls down the rebound. I think, I think we're all sitting here anticipating Kentucky just turning on 
and coming up with that run, but this guy, Marcus Camby, isn't going to allow you to get in a lane too easily. Look at him coming all the way from the back. I mean, he just loves blocking shots. He eats, sleeps, and drinks the block shot. He's got three tonight, and he's only 12 short of the school record already as he uh, last year came up just a little bit short of his own single season mark he blocked 105 shots two years ago 103 more last year that's incredible when you think of those numbers because it forces everybody to go to the perimeter and you look at Kentucky they used to live off the three but now they have declined in the number of threes that use because of their personnel they got more inside they're more inside oriented Carding, here's a guy that can do a little bit of everything for you. Yeah, he can shoot the three. Now he's going to get up on the baseline. See if you score, and then Kentucky can get him for all their different traps defensively. I think a key player for Kentucky tonight could be a kid that's not on the floor, but I'm a Wayne Turner. He's in Boston, Massachusetts. He's explosive. He can put points on the board. Underneath reverse layup by Bright. Bright's having a big, big first half. He's showing why he was a high school All-American. He said, hey, I can play with the big guys. He's got 11. Party baseline, trying to go over Candy, and he shouldn't have. Picks up the foul. Rick patino has got to feel a really tense moment now because they are struggling all fronts. We talked about this. Out of 93, they beat Carolina. In 94, they blow, blow away Arkansas. They just love, I think this guy with the emotion and enthusiasm, they love the challenge of playing the number one teams in America. Candy gets it ahead, Padilla on the run. Back to Candy, and he drew the foul. If we analyze right now this game, what are they not doing? They're executing against pressure. They're executing against the game. They're converting. They're making open shots. They're playing on a defensive end. And this club is absolutely stunned, as I am, and everybody in America, because believe me, Kentucky is an outstanding team. Number 24, Carmelo Cambiasso, returns for you, I wouldn't go out for a cappuccino, because this one has got a long ways to go. 10-10 in this half, and 18-point UMass lead. Well, you talk all Rolls Royce. When I picked my top five, I had Camby at one spot. How would you like this club? Camby and Tim Duncan, Terry Kittles and Ray Allen, and Jock Vaughn to run the show, and you come off the bench with Allen Iverson and Ryan Miner. That's my super seven. Might be about a basketball short, but it's a heck of a team. I'll tell you what, they have one heck of a basketball. He's got size, quickness. Ray Allen's going to have a phenomenal this year. Walker, boy, he laid his shoulder in way too hard, and he picks up the offensive foul and a little bit of whooping going on inside. They better not be smiling and really celebrating too early, Massachusetts, but they're playing great health defense. Now look at the double down. Look at the rotation by Camby coming over, taking the charge. From near and far. Walker with two fouls, a 19-point minute man lead. Can you believe that 19 points down Kentucky? That's right, if you just tune this in, they're 19 down. UMass just threw it away. As Bright trying to get the inbound to Travieso and threw it one direction, Travieso was heading the other. Calicari and his staff, I think they're a staff. They just step and go home to Amherst right now. But we got to come out and play a second half. Push-off, Travieso trying to stay with Tony Delp. Picks up his second. See, this on a neutral court. If this was that rough, where those fans really love their Kentucky team, that crowd would bring them back. That crowd would make them really explode and play with a little bit more emotion and intensity. I think they're playing a little afraid right now, right? There's quite a bit of blue in here. That's not what you cheer about yet. I think they really are playing a little bit Scared. It's not that they're intimidated, but they're a little worried. They're waiting for somebody to give them a lift, somebody to pick them up. Tony Delk is usually a guy that can do that. Take a look at that bench. That bench, is, there's no jubilation there. The enthusiasm is not there. Like, oh, we're going to get back. We're going to get back. It's like, wow, what has happened? Delk with four. See, what they need is a steal, a dunk. Here's Turner, who Nick talked about earlier. He's from Boston, Mass. with a great high school play. There's the steal. Now they need a great play right here. That's what they Oh, they don't get the conversion. They came up with a rebound, though, and they'll have another chance. Edwards outside. Not a three. That's what they need. The big three. That's a momentum builder. Now it gets them a little more active defensively. 
Now they're going to dig in defensively, try to force a turnover. He's got to play to get the 10. If he can play to get this to 10 at halftime. He's had plenty of time to make that happen. Down to 14. Katia pulls up, but he uh, got the wall. He's got a nice toss. The one thing I like about him at the point guard slot, he can make open shots. Edwards, who hit the last three-pointer. for a triple. They start knocking down those threes. They get back here quickly. They said, forget about 10. We have to be up. We don't want to play on 10. And again, double team in the backcourt. Tony Delk has had a solid career. Coming out of Tennessee, where he's a great high school scorer. He's much more comfortable in that second guard spot. It removes the responsibility of handling the ball. That's a bad shot. Yeah, that's a mile away. And now here's the outlet. Uh -oh. Walker on the fly. He missed the layup, but Turner's there to clean it. I'll get a timeout if I'm John Calipari. I smell that run. I'll get a T.O., baby. Yes, sir, Mr. Calipari. The Cats are getting a little bit alive. And the Kentucky faithful say, yes, we're coming back. They've got it back to an 11-point deficit with 8.28 to go in the half. Direct TV, grade eight, from the Palace at Auburn Hills, where UMass ran all over Kentucky early, but the Cats on a 10-2 run, the last minute, 45 seconds back in it. Well, we're gonna see one breakdown right here. There's the shot. Now we're gonna watch Kentucky get in transition. Now right here, freeze it. Right here, defensively, he doesn't rotate back. They sneak ahead of him, and they don't stop the ball. And they're able to get the ball on top. Now Walker makes the catch, but he's behind the basket tough, but there's Wayne Turner with the conversion. Dingle two on one, goes up with the left hand. That wasn't a good shot either. No, with not the stand be standing there. You just flip it up and you got a jam. They get it back, Travieso for three. That comes off and Pope's going to be fouled from behind by Weeks as he went up for the rebound. Yeah, Dana Dingle made a bad play in the lane. All he had to do was flip the ball up high. Marcus Camby had himself a jam. I like Pope's haircut. Look at that haircut. Could land a helicopter on that thing. I had it like that. I really did. Look, uh -huh. St. John's, they needed that W. A fan for Shella's team in Manhattan after losing to Cal Irvine. John Calipari's got to be thinking he wasted a timeout with the last shot his club took after a bad one before that and letting Kentucky now bring it back down with a chance to get it back to single digits. Hope's brother is in the free throw line. Oh, for three. Hey, he took the Valentine sign. Three ring sign, baby. Zip, zip, and zip out. And you said earlier he was perfect against Maryland. Had 26 points, a career high, transfer from the University of Washington. Now they can get into pressure. Now here comes the point guard trap. Good walk up on the baseline. They're going to try to trap on the first pass. Oh, look at the steal. Look the steal. Turner. But you got to convert. You got to make the steal. You got to make them pay after the steal. Look at that quickness. Edwards up off the glass. Can't get it. UMass ball. Alan Edwards getting a lot of playing time. Comes from a basketball family. His brother Doug played at Florida State. He's got a brother now playing at Miami. Leonard Hamilton's done a solid job last year. One of the most complete teams in America. Speaking of Edwards, Dingle, his cousin, goes out. In fact, he did not make him pay with that turnover. As Wayne Kern has got superb quickness. He's a big time scorer on a high school level, number five. He's got explosive quickness to the basket. Massachusetts wanted him badly as well. Candy wants it badly on the baseline. He converts. Oh, he's got the great touch. He's got the feathery touch. What a player he will be at the next level. 33 21. Trying to post, they're trying to post Delk inside. Hope and a block by Canby is fourth of the night. Hope is really struggling. I think he's thinking about Canby in his sleep. I'd be thinking about him too. Here's Canby on the other end. Hope with the board and a foul from behind. Well, that'll go on. Dante Bright is second. I'm going to take a look at Marcus Canby right here, number 21, showing how you post. Now they're going to have. There he is right now. They're going to try to put help, but he spins to the baseline where there is no help. And now look at him right here. Reaction. Give me the rock. Give me the rock, baby. Give me the ball. 
I'm going to carry you on my back. He's done it on both ends. Now he says, sure. look, I'll do it defensively. He said, yeah, I can do it on both ends of the floor, as Mr. Nestler said. I can do it both ways. He's had a heck of a half so far. Nine points, four block shots. Just Mark Pope. This is presence has really been tough. Just, uh, they say he's been dominating in practice. Look at this right here. Wow. Pope. Second one comes off. The two for six from the free throw line for Mark Pope. See right now, Massachusetts has got a, got a little bit more tempo going. They're starting to play at a little faster pace, which Kentucky likes. They hooked up these two clubs in 1992 in the NCAA tournament. That was the one Leonard Words. And there's Cammy going into deck, and he made that technical on Calipari for coming out of that coaching box. And that was the year that they went on and won that game, Kentucky. And then Kentucky played Duke in the all-time classic, 104-102, right. when Leitner made that shot, unbelievable shot. Gamby three for four from the line tonight. It was 104-103 when Leighton made that shot. It was a brilliant shot made by Grant Hill's pass. It threw the mass. Leighton with the catch. And the Dukies went on for the big place and won it all. They're on a nice move and with a left hand off the glass. That's what I talked about earlier, Brad. He's got that explosive step to the goal. And he has quickness. They are scrapping. They forced another turnover. This is the Kentucky style of basketball. When I went to watch them practice about two weeks ago, I told Rick Latino then, from 1 to 10, they were as good as any team I have seen in my 17 years at ESPN. to get it again to single digits for the Wildcats with 640 to go in the half. They're trying to post Duck inside. They'll step off that. McCarty for three. He has the ability to shoot the three. He's an inside-outside player, as is Walker. 28 triples last year from outside. He buries his first one of the night and does make it a single-digit game, 35-27. Turner's giving him a spark also defensively. Try to feed it to Camby. Forced it a little bit, but he put the shot in anyhow. There's no force for him tonight. Everything he's doing is nothing but velvet. Smooth as silk. Back to a 10-point advantage as we approach six minutes. McCarty had another opening, didn't take it. See, Camby's going into that three-second area. He's just like owning the lane. He's got to come out there and respect Pope because Pope can make the open jump shot. Yeah. Shake Travieso all night. Underhand scoop won't go. And then Pope tried to save it to Delk, but nobody home. And so he just tips it away. Then a Camby night. As Marcus Camby now locking inside against Mr. McCarty. They rotate help over, but it doesn't matter. Pope comes over and gives help in a rotation. Finally gets a breather. Came out of Hartford, Connecticut. 14 points. Getting baptism, baptism tonight playing that point guard slot to do you. Let's see how they do without Candy in there, though. And this is where Kentucky's got to really step it up. Maybe they're going to go to a little half-court trap instead of the head-to-head man-to-man. They give it up. That comes up with a loose ball and a turnover by Bright. I don't see the explosive Kentucky running game. They're going to be a great transition team this year, but we haven't seen that explosive running game. Collision inside, and Prickett picks up the foul. That's before us, Brad. The tremendous job that they're doing, Massachusetts getting back defensively. Full court pressure again. McCarley will handle the inbound man and almost force the turnover. Here comes Padilla in the open court. All the way. And a push by Dell. I like the idea right there that the media has. I'm going to attack this pressure. I'm just not going to retreat. I'm going to be an attacker. I'm going to attack the basket. Look at Calipari. It's looking at Dante Bright. It's Dante. Just listen to me, Dante. Just listen to me. <laughs> See, look at Padilla now. He said, I'm going to attack. Change the direction. Goes from the left, right to the left. And he gets fouled on a play. 
And now, after a quick word from his coach, has to hustle back up to the free throw line. They also played two years ago. Right now, Kentucky and Patino certainly has had the edge, beating Massachusetts in both games that played head-to-head. -head. Remember this, Rick graduated from Massachusetts, played there, was a guard. Yeah, graduated there in 74. Well, when he was a freshman, they had a fair player there by the name of Julius, Julius Irving. Not bad. Their coach is here tonight, isn't he? Yeah, Jack Lehman, he does the uh, color commentary. He coached Patino, coached Irving, solid <laughs> basketball ball. <laughs> Can be back in. That's a short rest. 39-27, UMass. You just can see he's going to have a dominated year. I mean, he is going to have a sensational year in Marcus County. Yeah, running out of real estate on the baseline is McCarty. I think also the presence of Tamby made that happen as well. You know, you get a little shell shock in here. You start thinking yeah. he's rotating over. Right. I got, I got. Little Cricket's trying to hug him. is going to pull up for the jumper. Ooh, they're banging under the board. No foul call. Kentucky ball. The one thing that impressed me with Patino's club at practice was their great transition ability from the defensive end to the offensive end, and that has been non-existent here tonight. Out of 440 left. 12 point lead that was 119. Whoa! You think they rocked the house and rough with that baby, McCarty? Oh, yes, it brings up some of the Kentucky Cat fans. McCarty with a follow. And I mean, did he follow it? A good authority. He's out of Evansville, Indiana. Went to the same high school as Howard Chaney. Here comes Turner with a steal. He actually just handed that one by Padilla. Oh, look at this kid get to the rack. I mean, he can get to the rack. He's going to get some PT. He's explosive. Wayne Turner. Now those single digits again. Eight-point lead. Thrown away again. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Four on one. Got to make the play. Calipari might want a 20 get right it. here. Ten. Yes, sir. He better get something. The Cats are on fire. 39-33. Cut to six from 19. The thoroughbreds are in high gear, baby. What a spark Turner has given him. He's so explosive to the basket. Patino is telling me the blue-white game. Guys were playing off him. He'd say, play off him. He doesn't shoot the jumper well. Can be triple T. And the foul's going to go against Mercer. Mercer picks up his first. There's Delk now with a little jumper in the lane, but Walker McCarty with that one-hand jam. Another way to turn it. A little hesitation. He spots the opening, and he goes right to the goal. An 11 4 run in the last three and a half minutes by the Cats. They did that tomorrow. A couple years ago, they're down 31 to LSU, and I was sitting there with my mouth open. Couldn't believe it. That's when they were bombing away three. I didn't believe it. I was watching that, baby. The only thing I regretted, I wasn't there to call it. I would have loved to call that sucker. I'll tell you, the Atlantic 10 this year is going to be a lot tougher. We've got five new teams coming in. Virginia Tech is really going to be a challenge for Massachusetts and Temple in that conference. Kentucky gets it down to eight with 3.31 left in the half. Minutemen by eight with 3.31 left first half. Marcus Camby's putting on a show, Dick Vitale. Well, we're going to show right now what makes him a complete player as we look at Marcus Camby. We're going to see all the parts of his game. There's his shot blocking ability. Now we're going to see he can step out and get triple threat position and get to the goal. Great offensive maneuver. Now we're going to show his ability down in the box inside. A little soft jump shot. 16 points, and where have they come from? The SWAT chart. Four blocks tonight. Those where the blocks have come from. I, mean, I like that. Every look time at somebody that. goes in there, there's one of those hands in the way. Oh, look at the creative people we got. Look at that. A little SWAT time. Yes, he's the human eraser. He's the rejection man. Thou shalt not enter thy lane. Delt. Tony Delt, if he gets warmed up, could mean a big difference. Well, as a scorer, he likes that little curl move where he gets into the lane, spurs his body, and knocks down the Rainbow J. See, I think the pace of the game has now picked up the favor of Kentucky. I think Kentucky likes the pace. Now they're trying to slow it down and get a little more tempo. When they had the tempo earlier, they were in command. The D on top, guarded by us. Got it. Dana 
Dingo played at that St. Raymond's program. In fact, he played with Kareem Reed, now starting for Arkansas. Up to that point, four players have scored all 41 of the points for UMass as Marcotti hits another three. You gotta like his versatility. No one in college basketball utilized the three better than Rick Pitino when it was inserted into the college game. Kentucky was down 29 to 10. 19 point deficit. It's now a five point game and they just keep chipping away. And we sat here totally stunned. But we also said, don't go too far away. I just know they got too much talent. And they're so well drilled. Caps over to Delk. He's all alone on the wing. Got they are back. The Cats are back. They are showing now why they've been rated number one in almost every poll in America. You know, you talk about Kentucky and Kansas. Tomorrow we see Kansas. Oh, those clubs are so deep. Eventually, they're going to get on a spurt. A two-point game. How quickly in a game of basketball things change. They almost threw it away again. Dingle has to struggle to get it. And now, possession arrows going to Kentucky. Hey, I remember earlier in this half, I have to admit it, they were down 19. And I said to my partner, I said, you know, with the tempo the way it's going, 19 looks like so big. I said, Patino's going to hope to get this maybe under 10 by halftime. Under 10. He said, we want the lead by 10 at halftime. And they may have it. They've got a chance to tie or lead here. Oh, he had, he had McCarty. They missed him on a box. Must have missed him. McCarty wants to rock now. He's saying, Mr. Camby, I'm going to put some points on the board, too. Bring me the ball. So guys, give me the rock. Yep. Here's McCarty. Makes his own shot. Doesn't get it, though. You know what he is? He's trying now to respond to the challenge of Marcus Camby. I'll bet Petito challenged him on the sideline. Patino's choice, choice words were probably, you're being intimidated, you're being humiliated. Come on, don't you have any pride? We play for Kentucky, we're the blue and white. Camby with Jared Crickett on him down low. Now just over a minute, in the half, count the shot clock. Baseline move and a good one it is by Dingle. In a dingle, I think Wright have to step up and put more points on the board this year with the departure of Lewis Rowe. Kentucky 6 of 7 from outside the arc. Let's see if they launch one here before halftime. They trail by 4. The final play to be a lot tougher this year. Is nice look inside the cricket. What a pass by Epps. Epps with the great look. Epps is a heck of a football player out of high school. Maybe Bill Curry can use it. There he is. Almost came up with a steal there. And a foul. Oh, Scagliano makes it up. Rick Pricken can't believe it. Rickett's got three. Patino says, Scagliano, why? Why? We got a Scagliano. We got a Patino. We got a Calipari. We got a Vitale. We got a Nestolino. <laughs> we got a halftime report coming up in 26 seconds. Arkansas, Michigan State, if you missed it, and upset by the Spartans. A must game in the Hoosier State and updates from the NBA and the NHL. It's all coming up at the half. You know, Brad, I mentioned earlier, Epps is a good football prospect as well. And that leads me to this. Well, it's great to have an athletic director with courage, with guts, like C.M. Newton. He didn't give in to all the people screaming for Bill Curry. I mean, if you can't, if you don't want Bill Curry, there's something wrong. He represents all that's good about college athletics. And C.M. Newton, we salute you for having the guts to stand tall and to extend his deal and allow him to coach. The folks I talked to from Kentucky today said that that decision was as well received as any they've seen ever there. Oh, he's such a quality person. Yeah, he's Not a, trying to get this kid Tim Gouch, a great, great quarterback prospect. Patino said he loves basketball, led the state in scoring. He could have a spot on our team if he comes to play with Mr. Curry. Gouch has set all the high school passing records and Kentucky is on uh, his finalist list. Single missed them both. That leaves the door open for the Cats to tie or lead at halftime because the shot clock is off. It's the game clock in the corner of your screen. I think if you're John Calipari, you only wish you could be going to Amherst right now instead of coming out and playing his second half. Sorry, we got 20 left, John. Or more. And now, let's see what Walker does with it. For the tie, got it. One-on-one -on -one maneuvers, Walker and McCarty. They're big-time prospects. Tied at halftime. Wow. wow. Once it was 19. Wow. Patino's got to feel like a million dollars. There was no quit. Camby had a great first half as an All-American. Look at this Kentucky fan. She loves her blue, baby. Looking good with a 
blue on tonight because they've come back to tie this thing up at intermission. Kentucky 45, UMass 45. Time to head back to the studio. Digger Phelps and John Saunders. Guys. All right, Brad and Dick, thanks a lot. 45 apiece, 19-point lead for UMass has been erased. We'll continue with more of the direct TV grade eight. I'll be joined. Action, there's easy first half, and as we're just about set to start the second half of our nightcap here tonight from the Palace in Auburn Hills, 45 apiece. We we'll welcome you back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale, halves within a half. We had a crazy first 10 minutes, and then Kentucky in the second 10 minutes took control. I tell you, it's been unbelievable. We were stunned out of the gate, 19 down. That's right, Kentucky was 19 down, and they went into halftime with the score tied. The reason, the making of the three the utilization of their bench and the tremendous pr tremendous pressure defensively that's what got them back they got so many athletes Marcus Camby was sensational in the first half really played like an all-american he was blocking shots and doing things like this for his 16 points and four block shots but Kentucky put together a tremendous run they shot 86% from three-point land in the first half, and that's what's got Rick Pitino's club back in it. They hit their last five threes, and there is the halves within the halves that we we're kind of talking about. 29 to 10, and then UK turns around 35-16 over the next 10-minute stretch. So with all of that, we're where we started, even. Six for seven for three-point range. Really, the life of the three-point shot. What a momentum builder. And McCarty stepped it up, and so did Dalk. And they just got, I thought Turner gave him a great lift off the bench. And there, the 86% for three-point line for Kentucky. And that's, they've done that over the years. I don't think they're expecting to use it here. Who's Candy on the break? Oh. oh, yes, big time jam. I mean, he's a high riser. He's an elevator man. Stepped right in the passing lane, made the good steal, and converted. Here's Pope coming the other way. And a blocking foul. I think Kentucky really will like the fact of opening up the court and getting this game into transition. There's Camby with the steal, the long arm, steps right in the lane. Look at that agility. Look at that mobility. Jam City. Oh, uh, what an athlete. This is what we talk about athletic ability. Superb quickness, great lateral quickness, the high riser, the great bounce off the floor. My friends, you are looking at a special player. The only thing he had to worry about there was how long he wanted to hang in the air before he rattled that one home. Hope at the free throw line where he has struggled tonight. At 26 against Maryland, didn't hit a deucer in the first half in terms of from the field. Three for seven for the strike. Tito looks a little bit more spark in his face in, in terms of coming back from that 19 down. Oh, there's another turnover. That's Kentucky basketball. Let's check in with Dan Bonner, DB. Thanks, Brad. One of the things that John Calipari was upset about, he thought that his team started to lose the lead when they stopped their good motion on offense. And Dick was talking about the Kentucky depths and pressure. Charlton Clark, the third guard for UMass, played one minute in the first half before he injured his foot. He came out for the second half on crutches. So Padilla and Travieso really have their work cut out for him. He played so little, I forgot he'd even been on the floor. And now they do have to pull all the weight in the back foot. He had a calf problem today at practice. He can barely get up and down the floor today. They tried to use him, but he was pinned with no go. Mercer short but he got it back he'll try it again short and then long and then the rebound comes off to travieso Derek anderson according to rick patino had been their best all-around player in practice he's trying to check Camby now he's got two fouls he's going to get his third yeah that's maybe part of the reason he didn't play more in the first half he got two early fouls he only played three minutes he's a transfer from ohio state played for the buckeyes Looks Just good. underway, second half, and UMass by one. Looks going to leave him on the floor with three. He's got enough people that he maybe can afford it. Can be nice adjustment in midair, and he banks it off the glass for 20. He's like a ballerina right there, a little ballistic walking wow. shorts. I mean, hanging in the air, gliding and sliding. It's amazing at 6'11 that he can do the things he does. Pope outside. He can shoot out there, but this one's short. McCarty, did he push off to yeah. get that rebound? Yeah, Mr. Rose got the play. And yeah, he got a tee. Oh. And he had a little tee. Oh, he got a tee on Patino. 
28 to go. The bench adds to the problems on the court. That's a big look right now. Massachusetts a little bit struggling here. The latter part of the first half. Come out here in the first half. Get the good the second half. Get the steal. But this could be big right here. Padilla will shoot on the other end. Got the two plus possession of the basketball. Notice how even with the technical Petito just Took his side away from Larry Rosemont, right back to the five guys on the court and tried to start coaching. <laughs> so the technicals are converted. Got the matching suit, the tie, the whole bit. I mean, this is Armani at its best. Hey, Mr. Armani's going to be here right here tomorrow. Pat Riley of Kentucky graduate. Right? Yeah, he's going to be in town here. He's going to be scouting. Well, Petito may have left Larry Rosemont. He's giving Frank Scagliano a year for life. Well, Steve Scagliano will get away with it because he's talking Italian and they can understand each other. Uh-huh. Dingle off the glass. And it's a What a big turnaround. Look at the bump in the grinding. Now here it is. Kentucky again. They really like to flirt with this basket. They get themselves behind. Here goes Dana Dingle going to go down the lane. His high school coach jumps out of his seat, Gary DeCesar. He said, that's my guy. He's from out of the Bronx, St. Raymond's. Colt picks up his third foul, too. Something to keep an eye on. So UMass has stormed out of the gates here. Somebody. I don't think you can continually fall behind and expect always to come back. Plus, you get good quality basketball teams. You're going to a half-court trap now. Should be able to use a 2 one 2 get the ball to the post. There's the post area. 9-1 run by UMass. Candy would have stuffed that one into the first row in the expensive seats, but there was a travel beforehand. I think he's showing a lot more emotion than he used to in terms of playing. He knows I am the man now. Well, with Lou gone, he's almost got to be. Got to step up and become that type of player. Boy, he's answered the call tonight. To become a real All-American. This Kentucky with their half-court trap. Travieso makes a tough catch. Camby now to Padilla on the trail. What a nice look by Marcus Camby. Padilla converts. He scores. He finalizes. Ten-point lead. Well, Kentucky's going to have to dig themselves out again. The three-point shot got him back from that 19-point deficit. And they knocked down their last five. Edwards feeds inside. Walker's all alone and rolls it off the glass. Good 25 degree angle. Excellent post entry. Getting the ball down to the low post. Walker and McCarty can score down inside. First field goal of the half for Kentucky. And traveling violation on the Minutemen. Well, you'll see these teams again on ESPN in the very near future, as a matter of fact. How about next Wednesday? Wow, I can't wait to get up there for that. That's Tim Duncan, Duncan against Marcus against Camby. Against Camby. Are you kidding me? There wow. might be more blocks in that than the old Redskins used to throw for John Riggins. And then Tech in Kentucky will be a week from Saturday. I'll be in Lexington to bring you that one. That's going to be a good one watching Stephon Marbury and company go down to Lexington. What a special place Lexington is. I'll tell you, those rough arena fans get behind their blue and white. Walker picks up his third foul, so that's a wasted opportunity for the Wildcats. Patino can't believe it. Look at he's doing the Italian Tarantella on the sideline. He just cannot believe it. He said, what have they got against me? I can't believe this. What's happening? He's like a stun look, a shock look. Eight points down with 17 to go. Long way to go, but is it possible that UMass can be the giant killer again and pick off another number one team? I think he's going to make some changes in his lineup. Yes, there he is. Goes now to the bench. I thought their combination was better when they had Wayne Turner on the floor in that first half. Walker is fouled. I'm going to call that one on Padilla. Brings Pickett on for Pope. Look at Patino. Look at this. Look at this. He can't believe it. Look at this. He's doing that stuff. He can't believe it. I can't believe it. Look at him. I'm covering my face. What's going on? <laughs> Coaches, what a pain. Look. It's amazing. Oh, the just told me today, you got the best job in the world. Better than all of us. Delt off the glass. Tony Delt with that nice move to the goal. Double zero. Tony's got 14. Go, go, go. Got those long arms. 
They've got full court trap. Here goes the Kentucky trap. They let you reverse the basketball. They gotta post somebody up, gotta come to the basketball. Somebody's gotta post in the middle. See if Frickin, I see if Ricky can stay with Camby. Well, you can use the skip pass right over the top of the trap. They don't need Camby. It's Dingle underneath with good position. And what they're doing now, Vlad, is they're attacking the pressure. They're trying to finalize and convert against pressure. Six for six, UMass, in this half. And now UMass changes defenses, go to a little 2 3 matchup. Swatted away by Camby is fifth of the night, and it was Prickett trying to put it up there. I really believe that the 2-3 zone is going to be made to order for Massachusetts, especially with a Camby in that lane as a shot blocker. He's going to be leading to the sideline, too. Says, Come on, guys, we can win here. We can win here. Camby doing a great job. UMass up by 10 with under 16 to play. I'll tell you one thing, Brad. We're going to take a look at life in the wacky world of the coaching profession. You're playing number one. Look at Mr. Calipari. He says, wow, what a way to make a look. Get back. Come on, what did you throw to pass? Oh, it's a wacky world. They're on a 15-5 run as Minutemen right now, and they have not missed from the field in the second half. Really came out with a lot of intensity and emotion, Massachusetts, up to blowing that 19-point lead. Foul inside. Travieso got a cheap one. That's his third. And I watched this guard situation. As Dan Bonner said, their backcourt's pretty much Padilla and Travieso, and one has two and one has three fouls now. Especially for Massachusetts versus Kentucky, who has so many people they can bring in. Ball loose. And here comes UMass. They're coming up with all the loose balls. Can be straight up with a jumper. Mercer high for the rebound. That's a big-time rebound. Now, here comes the Kentucky transition game. But look at Mass get back. Walker. Doesn't matter. He shoots right over the top of the defense. The defense gets back to the tandem in transition, and he shoots the jumper right over. Uh-oh. Nobody home. Padilla is going to slow up. Oh. Smart play. He did not have it. Walker had the angle for the block shot. He's an amazing stat. Kentucky's starting guards have no assists. At this point of the game, that shouldn't be the case. Oh, that's an amazing number. Candy. Bright trying to follow it. Tipped out of there. Travieso on a jumper. And finally, Mercer with his second rebound and his many trips down court. Here's Tony Delk now trying to push the ball up the court. Shepard triple. Got it. They're knocking down those triples. I mean, they're dialing AT&T, baby. Long distance. They say, we are dialing the big three. That cuts it back to five. Look at you, they say, why do they do this to me? Why do they spot people 19, 10, and they want me always to come back, come back? Let's check in with Dan Bonner. Thanks, Brad. At that last time out, John Calipari told his team, look, guys, we got three more sets to play, meaning they've got three more four-minute stretches that they got to go, and he says, then the game is ours. So with the fact that he's a little short at the guard spot, he's trying to break the game down into those four-minute TV timeout segments. And in the first half, a couple of those segments went to Kentucky, so Rick Pitino's probably going to be telling them the same thing. I'll tell you, Dan, that is really brilliant coaching. He's really playing with their mind as we look here at Ben Stoning, scoring the opponents, UMass, last season versus tonight. Trying to feed it down low. Prickett got in the way of that pass. Around a pick, Padilla, air ball, just about got a little piece of the backboard on the back side. See a lot of people wondering about that stat. What we're trying to show there, basically, is that Massachusetts very limited to what they have coming off the bench. Kentucky is loaded on the bench. Bright. UMass has cooled off. Oh, nice the hand of McCarty. Leaves it back for Mercer, and he fouled. Weeks got him. He's trying to stay with him. When Kentucky finds its rhythm and its timing, and they start getting their running game going, oh, no, 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 no. game with the right combinations. I was going to say, maybe finding the lineup's the key. Oh, they're gonna, I'll tell you one thing, they're going to put big numbers on the board. Coach O'Brien working the stat sheet there. Former head coach in Dayton. And a foul even before. Weeks again. Ball number three, David Dingle. 
He's accused him a power player on the inside. Very strong physical player. Came out of high school of Philadelphia. Was a solid high school player. Last year gave him some positive minutes off the bench. Weeks picks up the foul. It's nice to have those guys that are interchangeable. They're so versatile when you put McCarty and Walker. Oh, McCarty wanted a ball on a box. Didn't get it to him. Well, Weeks has got a week's worth of fouls here in the last minute or so. <laughs> 13 59 to go. Still a five point game. I like all those one liners. I mean, you're getting ready for David Letterman. I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, I'm free if he's got an open night for me. Give me a walk. I'll come down and watch. <laughs> I don't know, are you a Letterman guy or a Leno guy? I like them both. Try to play through. Knocked out of bounds. There'll still be Kentucky ball. I'm neither. I'm a Sports Center guy. Give me the Sports Center. Forget about Leno. Forget about Letterman. Give me Sports Center. Uh, you know where you catch your side, don't you? Come see the highlights. They're going to see off this game. Shepard. Nice lead him inside for Prickett. Well, Weeks. <laughs> what else can I say? He might fall out here in uh, a matter of two minutes. I thought he was going to get him out of the game. Norvo, he got some minutes last year. He looks a little bit stronger. Number 15, Enos Norvo, returns for you, man. That's all right, Tyrone. You right, gave us some minutes. You gave us some time. You gave us some fouls. You <laughs> You laid some body on some people. Yeah, yeah, he's had to bring it to the free throw line. He told me he had some of the most vicious practices he's ever had last week. He said, we just went at it like you couldn't believe in practice. Coming over the top of screens. I mean, it is a... I mean, you get in to watch his team's practice. It's unbelievable. Jared Prickett only... Three points tonight. There's his numbers from last year. The year before is when he put up the big numbers. In fact, he had a 17-point, 15-rebound night two years ago against you, Mayor. Yeah, really worked the offensive boards. Oh, look at him using the baseball pass. Yeah, you got to watch out for that one with Jeff Shepard jumping out of the gym over there. He broke it up and almost intercepted it. Looks like a defensive back. He's getting a little bit sluggish right now. Broke away from its rhythm. It's well, UMass started off, they hit their first six field goals, and then they missed five. So they're in a cold stretch right now. Maybe Candy's the guy that can get them out of it if they can get it in his hands. And they bring the ball to the wing with the D and Candy isolated. It's tough to give help. Dangle for three. And he's fouled by Mercer. That's three free throws. Not really a good play right there by the freshman, Ron Mercer. Dingle, not a real good shooter. And every year, shooting a, a three-point shot. He fouls him. And gets three. We're in the last 13 minutes of our nightcap tonight, but tomorrow night more. Direct TV grade eight from Auburn Hills. We'll start off with Tim Duncan and Wake Forest against the Cowboys of Oklahoma State at seven. And then number two. We're seeing number one tonight. We'll see number two tomorrow night. Jock Vaughn of Kansas against the 15th-ranked Cavaliers of Virginia at nine. That is all coming up tomorrow night. Brad Nussler, Dick Vitale, and Dan Bonner with you from Auburn Hills, Michigan. Kennedy goes over, and now he's going to say, take it easy. Don't worry about it, Dano. See, he missed these. Still got two other attempts. Hey, Billy Dano, former assistant coach at Massachusetts, doing a great job recruiting down at UNLV. Many people rate his class as one of the top five in the early signing period. Bringing some excitement down there with Isaiah Epps, Keon Clark, he signed, a junior college player. Worked under Mr. Calipari. And then you think about all the guys that worked under... Patino, Tubby Smith oh, doing a solid a job at Georgia. Them. Herb Sendick, one of the rising stars of Miami of Ohio. Ralph Woolard doing a phenomenal job at Pittsburgh. Billy Donovan at Marshall. Dingo got two of the three free throws. Kentucky throws it away. Mercer back-to-back -back mistakes. I think he's going to get Mercer out of the game just for a moment. He's going to sit down. Let the game come to him, bring him back on the floor. He's struggling right now. Five-point advantage, UMass with 13. Remaining in the ballgame. Gina's a big fan of Shepard. Look at him working defensively. Oh, look at him moving his feet. Very active. But he uh, thought about a three, threw it away. Trying to get it into Candy. You can't blame him, but McCarty is there. That's been such a trying to put constant pressure. Mercer missed. They couldn't get the follow and back down the minute, man. They've got numbers, but they're going to slow it down. Got to make that open shot. 
Nope, up and over. So Dingle's just a couple out there, and he's saying, oh, yeah, I just got to keep my head, Coach, I know. So I think we take away the scoring ability of Delk as a big-time scorer. He's made more threes than anybody in the history of Kentucky basketball when he's placed at that point guard slot. He just looks so much more comfortable when he's the guy thinking shot as opposed to trying to get everybody else involved. Yeah, I agree with you. Right now he's trying to make like the playmaker. I'll bring him the ball and say, Tony, do what you do best, baby. Score. Shepard feeds down low. McCarty on a reversal. Normal got it. So a block shot from somebody other than Campbell. I love block shots. I think that is so special. When I was coaching, I had a great shot blocker, Terry Tyler, now an assistant coach at Notre Dame. There's the rejection by Norville. He said, Camby, if you can do it, I can do it. Camby says, but anything you can do, I can do better than you. <laughs> I think that was a song, wasn't it? Anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> I can't see. No field goal over the last four minutes for UMass. So that is alone has kept Kentucky in the game, but they're still down five. And Kentucky has not taken advantage of their great effort defensively. They're swatting it away and getting some steals, but they're cold on the other end. And now Turner's going to check back in. So will Pope for Kentucky. But in the meantime, we're going to take a timeout with 11 minutes, 39 seconds to play. It's UMass trying to pull off an upset of top-ranked Kentucky. From Auburn Hills, Michigan, where it's 62-57 UMass in the second game here tonight with 11.39 to go. If you missed our first game, you missed a dandy as Michigan State pulled off an upset tonight of the number 25 team in the country it was Michigan State 75-72 for first-year coach Tom Izzo and it was Jamie Fike leading the way 20-12 and 12. and he was our most valuable player in that first game could it be Marcus Camby our MVP in the second game and could there be another upset well we're about 11 minutes and 39 seconds away from finding out. Well, when you talk about Camby, we talk about the great big players in the game. There are five guys that jump at me. Tim Duncan certainly won. Camby, you got to like certainly Lorenzen Wright, Eric Dampier. And I like this kid, Tim Young, down at Stanford. He's going to be a big timer. He's 7-1. Those are all my all space eaters. <laughs> Massachusetts comes out with his own. Deep three zone. Kentucky's got to get the gaps. Delt for three. Rolled out on him. Can't be another rebound. To go with his 22 points and five block shots. His third rebound of the night. He has really played like an All-American tonight. The only area he's been really not super is on the rebounding end. Massachusetts last field goal was five minutes ago, and they're still in front. I mean, it's crazy. It is really wild because Kentucky has done nothing on the offensive end. On a defensive end, both clubs are playing well. Camby knew he had a layup right there, and he bobbled the ball. Let's see if Delk gets open now as the two-guard returner at the point for some three-point shooting. I think you can see things really happen now with Wayne Turner on the floor. I really believe that. He's explosive. They're going to zone him because he's such a great penetrator. Lob for Polk. Maybe a little too much to handle. They got a foul out of the play. And it's going to be... Now Anthony Epps is going to check in, and let's see if Turner comes out. Epps is a guy also that can get dealt the ball. They're trying to throw the diagonal over the top. They're trying to get it down. This can be fronting. I think that's a tough pass to make. Yeah, sure is. Foul. I mean, you can be inside. Got number 21 jumping in front of you. Exactly. You got to know where people are. Hope at the free throw line, and right now UMass would take that the way he's got free throw. What about that time? He'll probably nail a couple in a row. I really think he's a much better free throw shooter than we saw him early in the game. But he hasn't had a field goal. Exactly. They really shut him down. Got them both. He's a Marco Polo man. He's a traveling guy. Transfer. Former Pac-10 freshman of the year in Washington before his transfer. A little backcourt pressure. The game is down out of three. Get a ball up on top. That's a nice job of attacking the pressure. Padilla feeds in low. Good tough shot by Dante Bright, his first basket of the second half. He powered his way up there. Dante Bright's very active on the baseline. He's got the great ability to get his body up quickly. Is that 2 3. Got to get in those gaps. They're going to bring the ball and dunk in a wing. There it is. For three. Thank got you. Halfway through the second half, a two point game. 
great way of attacking that 2-3 zone. Bring the ball to the cut of the deep. Walker with a steal. And here they go. For the tie. They're going to go for the lead. They want to go for the lead. They don't want time. They have never led in this game, by the way. See how good things can happen if the turn is on the floor. That one comes off. Epps with a three that wouldn't go. Under nine and a half. UMass is led by as many as 10 this half. As many as 19 during the course of the game. Epps on the floor now. Turn is on the sideline. They're going Epps at the point. The over pole. Nice you, shot. Anytime they need a big basket, they go right to the Royal American. And that's what a superstar is supposed to do. Make the big play when your club is struggling. 24 points for Marcus Camden. That's why you're a special player. Dell. Kentucky trying to answer with their senior guard. He missed a three. Travieso and Padilla have done a nice job when they don't have any numbers to slow things down. 22nd timeout taken by the Minutemen. So just to calm things down a little bit, John Calipari takes a quick 20. His club up four. Watch, we're going to take a look right now. This guy's going to get free for the jump shot on the wing when the ball goes into the gut of the defense. The ball's going to go into the gut of the defense. Freeze it right here. And there we're going to take a look, and he's going to kick it out here wide open. That baby's going right in that hole. It's going to go right down. There it is, Mr. Doug. He's the all-time guy in making threes for Kentucky. And then they said, okay, you got Doug, but we got the big guy. We got the all-aircraft, as Al McGuire would call him. We got the aircraft man. We got number 21. We got an All-American. He said, you guys can't check me. Come on now. I'm a superstar. He said, I am awesome, baby, with a capital A. He's pushing himself for all it's worth, and uh, fatigue is going to become a factor at some point. At the pace of the game, 8.40 left. 66-62. And that's where you got to give the edge. you got to give the edge to Kentucky if you're looking at a fatigue factor. They've got all the bench to work with. You've got guys that have been rested like Anderson. We haven't seen the real Derek Anderson yet. Number 23. Padilla, that's not a good shot. Ahead on the break. Anderson tried to go up and had it stripped away. Great strip by Massachusetts because he looked open right there. I mean, Derek Anderson was rated by... Mr. Patino as their best player, their all-around complete player in their preseason workout. He's got himself in foul trouble every game so far. Approaching the eight-minute mark, Padilla got his man in the air and then brings it back out. Dingle, right-hander, go! I'll tell you, the left-hander goes to the right hand. He shows he's ambidextrous. Is I that the so. word? Is it that is. the word? You mean I used the word more than one syllable? It's close enough. McCarty for three. Oh, yes. Kentucky answers with the trifecta. They just, every time they're in trouble, look at him. He's put his heart and soul. You gotta love coaches that put their heart and soul on a parry. And you watch Patino. The players love playing for him because they know how intense and how competitive they are. 68-65. And keep in mind, Kentucky is trade dexterous. Three pointers, they'll be right back in this one. I'll tell you what great coaches we are having in this classic. When you think of the guys that were here, Nolan Richardson and tomorrow, Roy Williams. Jeff Jones, Dave Odom, and Eddie Sutton. That's coming up tomorrow. That's a fair group of coaches. Not isn't bad. It? Not bad at all. Three pointer, Travieso won't go. Rebound comes off, and they send a call walk. He's not happy with that call after working that hard for the rebound. We're watching a performance here of Marcus Camby. This is what Tim Duncan's going to have to do for the making up of the loss of Randolph Childress. Right now, a three-point UMass lead with 7-12 left. Again, we take another look at a guy that is number one in America, and everybody wants him. He can't believe it. Look at him working the sideline. I mean, oh, look, he's probably shown how to run. Now the ball is going. Look at the great hands. I mean, he has great hands. Wow, take a look at here at the storyline, Brad. UMass has never trailed, thanks to Marcus Camby, who is the leading scorer in the ballgame. It's only Delk. 17, and Kentucky with that three-point shooting still very much in the thick of things, trailing by three with 7-12 left to go. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, Dan Bonner with you from the Palace of Auburn Hills. Game two, night one of the second. Picked up his turtle. Grade eight. The Dingle gives him another hand where he can step outside. You know, since UMass was so hot to open the second half, being six for six, they're three for 11 since then. 
And Kentucky, like we said earlier, hasn't really had some great runs yet because Massachusetts is making up. This is an old theory. If you're not playing well offensively, you got to continue to guard. And if you guard people, you're going to have a chance to win. And that's what Massachusetts has done here when it went cold. Inbound to Dingle all along. Good execution down inside. Great movement without the ball. Dingle steps to the basketball, makes the catch, and gets the deuce. McCarty for three. Big shot. I mean, you can't let him square his body and get a look at the goal. Four triples tonight for McCarty. All 6'10 of it. And Kentucky now 10 of 15 from three-point land. And it's a two-point ball game. Travies will try one of his own. Battle for the board. Who won it? Kentucky the, did. The only thing really escaping Patino in his coaching career, basically, is the fact he hasn't cut the nets down and won a, a national championship. He's been to two Elite Eights, a Sweet 16, went to the Final Four in 93, went to the Final Four with Providence as well in 87. Won a division with the Knicks. Oh, there's the wow. screen. Could have been a tie, and McCarty couldn't get it to drop. Had the play set up with a back screen, with a diagonal pass, couldn't make the catch and the conversion. McCarty's playing head-to-head -head now. Pope is playing on Camby. They're trying to get a lot of help on him. Dingle has really come up big this half. I'd say he has stepped up his game. Their high school coach, Kareem Reed, and Dingle is here. Came from New York. He's got to be so proud of the effort of his kids. And Dingle has 13 points this half and 17 for the game. Padilla, the foul. And that's what they're looking for him to do this year. They want him to step up his score and put on a I can never understand all those hand gestures. You understand them, coaches? They're doing all these hand gestures. Hey, if I could understand hand gestures, I'd understand you. <laughs> There's Dana Dingle in the lane, the little left-hander from New York City. There's that rotation. He's going to go down. Shower steps up. What a beautiful building this is. Here it is. Jeff Shepard, four points all this half. We know a mass alumnus that's going wild here. Came over, said hello to us today. Mr. Landry. Yep, Greg Landry. He's here tonight. Quarterback coach now of the uh, Detroit Lions. Yeah, to lead the conference in offense. He's doing a great job. He deserves a head job somewhere. They're going to win their next four games. They're going to win their next four. They got Tampa Bay. They'll beat Chicago. And they got Jacksonville and Houston. And Wayne will keep his job. Fox has more lives than Batman. 72-69. Oh, you better give help right here. You better give help. The help was too slow coming. 26 for Candy. At the five-minute mark, it's a five-point game. Can't allow him to get the ball in that deep. Shepard, nice look to Epps. Top shot for Epps, one of the little guys on the court. Very unselfish guy. Typical Kentucky basketball. Always move the ball for the open man. Let's see if this pressure wears down Massachusetts. I'll tell you, Padilla's going to get a nice... Oh, that ball was loose. you got to get on a loose ball. you got to get on a loose ball. ball. Trying to call a timeout. It's a hell ball. Oh. arrow goes the other way. See, that's why I don't like the rule. Kentucky makes the great effort. They force the loose ball. They jump on it. And instead of us now throwing it off and making it equal for both clubs, Massachusetts gets rewarded. Get rid of that. Come on, rules committee. Get rid of that sucker. It doesn't belong in the game. Let the referees throw it off. Human error when they throw it up, so what? I have to wonder if they got to look at Dingle. You guys, the way he picked it up this half. Right, nice reverse layup. Oh, that's just superb quickness on the baseline. And I just think the presence of Camby in the lane is freeing up Dingle, freeing up right along that baseline. Both lost the handle, out of bounds. This is Denver's danger time. This is the time Calipari won. He told Ken Bonner he's going to break the game up into segments. And he said, hey, we have three more segments to go, and then we're going to win it. It's going to be winning time. And look at him. He's hugging. I mean, he's squeezing his player. He said, I love you. He's 14 seconds away from his last segment. <laughs> Five points up. Oh, that's a bump. Woo! Check in with Dan right now. Brad... John Calipari certainly thinks he's close to the time where his team can win the game, but his biggest concern right now is that his players are exhausted, particularly Padilla and Travieso. Jump out of court. 
Hey, you suck it up now, though. Hey, Dad, when you played, we you young kids. You got to suck it up right now with four to go. You got to reach back. This is what you practice all year for. You got number one on the ropes. People, stay tuned. This is number one. Walker, or rather Mercer. Oh, he missed the jam. McCarty missed the jam. Every time Kentucky's had a chance to tie this thing up or lead, something's gone wrong. They do come up with a steal. Now Mercer trying to get it ahead to McCarty. Turn into WWF here. <laughs> what is this? I don't know. What's going on? I can't believe this. Oh, what is going on? We had a bumper Settle car, down. bumper car thing happening there for a second. Settle down. <laughs> Hey, people, stay tuned. I mean, are you kidding me? We got a three-point lead by Mass over the number one team in America. And remember this. They have done this throughout John Calipari's career. 93, they beat the number one team in the nation. 94. Take a look now. There goes Mercer. Now, here comes the, the miss on a jam by McCarty. Hits the back of the rim. Gets the iron. Three minutes and 45 seconds. All we have left in regulation time with a minute man up three. People of Northwest Airlines. Three UMass try to stun the number one team in the country. And Gary Miller and Carl Ravitch will have these stories on SportsCenter coming up. Speaking of Kentucky, Mashburn against Alonzo, who had a huge night, top 25 action. Update on Emmett Smith's injury. That and a lot more is about 345 away. The bench scoring tonight. Wow. Well, let's expect a Kentucky reaching down to that bench. Massachusetts really doesn't have much of a bench in terms of being able to give them some point production. It's very obvious. They rely on their starters. Weeks is really the only guy that's played to any extent, and he got more fouls than anything else in a hurry. McCarty now steps up some huge free throws. He's got 16 on the night. They also become big, Dad, because they want to convert and get into their full court pressure. Let's check in with Dan Bonner, Dan. Brad Dick was talking about the fact that the kids have to suck it up. John Calipari told his kids to put it all out on the floor, that he put them on IVs after the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the three of us are going to be on in about three and a half minutes. Two-point ball game. They're trying to run into a trapping area now. You get too close, you got to spread the court. you got to get really great spacing against Kentucky. If you get close to one another, that ball is being doubled up. Candy. Double him down low, bright on the break, and underneath, Dingo and a block. They formed a nice triangle, Massachusetts, by getting the ball from Camby to Dingo the bright. If they didn't come up with the score, they're going to try to take some time off the clock, manage the clock. Camby's double teamed. He got a shot away anyway. Wow, he's put away from the double team. That's an all Rose Royce. He's a PTP, baby. He's awesome, baby. Mr. Camby. He's this magical. Over three to go, a four-point ball game. Outside jumper won't go. Camby with another rebound, and he's fouled. He's trying to do it all right now. He's trying to carry this club on the back. He says, I'm going to carry you right to Amherst, baby. I'm going for the tri trifecta. We beat Carolina when they won. We beat Arkansas when they won. And we want to beat Kentucky. What a great performance. I mean, he put that in the face of Mr. Pope. Now watch him. He'll turn around. There it is. Great rotation. Rick Petito down to the last three minutes to try to avoid an upset. Pope has four fouls after that one. And Canby will step up with 28 points, five boards, five blocks. Oh, what a night. I'll tell you, we talked about earlier, Artie, he had to have a dominating game for them to have a chance against Kentucky. And he has responded to the challenge. He told me today at the workaround. I told you, he said, hey, I'm ready tonight. I am ready to play. This coach is ready to explode in about 258 if this holds. I'll tell you, he's got the great rotation now. He steps up with a lot of confidence. Made a smart move coming back to college this year. His stock is going up, up and up, baby, just like your stock. That's right, yeah. Travieso wraps up Tony Delk, who was trying to get free for a three-pointer. And he picks up his fourth foul. Well, you put him on a foul line, you stop the clock, you allow him to get into their full court pressure. UMass. There's the upsets they pulled off in the last two years. They have an 80 to 74 lead. And last year, when they scored 80 points or more, they were not beaten. 
They went 17-0 when they were 80-plus last year. Well, and you talk about the great architects in college basketball, John Thompson, Bobby Cremins. you got to talk about them, but what a job this guy has done at Massachusetts. There's the full court trap, and they get the great size of McCarty. Little rotation was a little bit slow by Anderson. Candy will bring it back out. Managing the clock now, understanding what's happening. Now the role of the point guard. This is where you have to mature as a player. Travieso and Padilla, I don't know how they've kept their tongues in their mouth. They have played the whole game. Yeah, they haven't been able to get any help from the third guard. Oh! Over and back. Over and back, yeah. Instead of hit your foot. Scagliata right on the call. What a courageous effort by both guards. It's amazing they've played almost every minute in this game. Normally they got an outstanding high school player who's here, but I know Charlton Clark last year was a tremendous high school player, but he's out with an injury as Dan Bonner talked about. Now what Kentucky can't do is just worry about only where Tony Delk is. And a foul before the move by Anderson. They're going to call it on Bright. They got so many other weapons that they can go to. They've got plenty of time. They don't have to worry about threes. They're only four points down with 214 left. That's an attorney to these games, especially with Calipari. Boy, is it ever. I mean, he can't wait to get on that bus. I mean, he doesn't need a plane to take him back to Amherst and say to win this game. I can guarantee you that. Fly home on his own, right? He says, you know, Patino wants to always play us when he knows he can beat us. Don't forget Charlie Gary with Sports Center coming up next. That's Charles Clark we were talking about. Crutches and all. Anderson hasn't scored tonight. Hasn't hit a whole lot of minutes. Got a foul trouble right away. Whoops, the free throw. He's from out of Louisville, Kentucky, a tremendous talent, very versatile player. This game's going to be going on the free throw line. Specialization, you got to make free throws, especially late in the game. Doesn't go. Here comes Candy, breaking free throws. He doesn't on to break. And pinned in the rim by Epps. I'll tell you, Tamby does not want to be denied. I haven't seen him play with this kind of feeling and this kind of desire in many a year. I mean, watch him go up here now, take this off the glass. I mean, he says, I'm going to be the Windex man. I'm going to take it off the glass. I'm going to protect it, and then I'm going to spin out with it. I'm going to show you I can make like a 5'10 guard. I can handle a rock. He said, I can be like Marbury. There it is, and he kicks it to Dingo. I mean, Tamby's doing it all. But you know what? He's not selling popcorn. He's not cleaning the floor. He's got to do more than that. Right with 16 points. Think he's earning his scholarship tonight? Oh, I guess. Tina knows it's getting to nerve-wracking time, mailbox time right now. When it gets under that two-minute mark, that's when things really start to tighten up a little bit. And we are going to be under that by the time Kentucky takes the shot. They're down by five. I like to play Epps at the end of the game. Makes big things happen. Epps got mugged. That's on Padilla. That's his fourth. And he and Travieso both have four now. Good and job in the last minute and a half, they can ill afford to lose a guard. And they can ill afford to have this game if you're Massachusetts go to overtime. Go to overtime. That's right. Can't have this baby go to OT. Those guards have absolutely nothing left. But Mr. Camby's going to try to. He has a lot left. Look at the bounce. Look at the bounce. Up. Look at the bounce. Up. He's got enough energy for all of us. Look at him. Epps, only one for one this year, but an 85% free throw shooter to lead the team last season. So a good guy for Kentucky to have. <laughs> Never mind. I don't, I don't know why I do that to these kids. <laughs> it seems automatic every year when we do that. Got the second to make it a four-point game. With 1.59 left, UMass trying to hold on for an upset. We'll find out if they can do it when we come back. Marcus Camby tonight has been everything we expected and then some. He's led his team to a four-point lead with 1.59 left in regulation. Right now, the timeout situation, Kentucky, full complement. UMass with two, team fouls 13, so Kentucky shooting two the rest of the way. If they can get their hands on the ball, that is. Padilla and Travieso have not let them do that. They played throughout. I'll tell you, start scrambling three guys attacking the basketball. You can be in great trouble. See the way they get great spacing now? They stay apart from one another. They don't want to fit together. You're in a perfect angle for a double team if you bring that ball together. They work it down to one, 25. You want to be at least 17 feet apart. They're trying to isolate Camby. And a foul after all that work on Anderson. 
And Rick Pitino just said, Derek, look at the clock. There was only seven seconds left on the shot clock when he picks up his fourth foul. Fort Center next, a minute and a half from now, barring overtime. I'll tell you one thing, you look at this right now, and I know a lot of people say, well, overrated Kentucky. It's not a matter of overrated. Tonight they met a player, an All-American, who really played at another level. He played like a flat-out superstar and has put his club in position here to get this big W. Up five now, even though this sucker's not over. 131 left on the clock. This kid has done a solid job as well. Edgar Padilla, 5 for 5, free throw line, 77% last year. The two technical free throws, remember, back at the 18-28 mark. He's had to handle that ball against that pressure all night long, and he hasn't had a minute on the sideline. Now Kentucky's got to start worrying about threes and shooting in a bit of a hurry. Peter locking up on Dunk, trying to take away his look at the goal. Walker will spin inside. Candy's got another rebound. And gets the outlet. And he does a great job protecting the basketball. 30 points, 8 rebounds, 5 block shots. Is that a night or is that a career? What a great job they did locking up on Delk in that position. I mean, that's an awareness as to what is happening on the floor. Massachusetts did a superb job defensively. Direct TV grade eight from Auburn Hills in Kentucky about to go directly to some other spot in the rankings if they don't have a turnaround in the next 69 seconds. All right here we're going to take a look defensively. Look at the awareness right now that Massachusetts has. Freeze it. See right here. Defense, offense. He knows he can shoot the three. He's not going to let him out of his sight. Travis is going to be right up and dunk. He says, no, Tony, look. I'm not going to let you get the ball. Freeze it. Freeze it. Right here. Look at him. He's right over. He says he knows he wants to get to the line. I'm not going to let him get there. That's just tremendous awareness. Now he's going to get right up over the screen. See, now he gets over the top of the screen. Now he shadows him again. He says, no, Tony, I know you're the record holder. I know you made more threes than anybody in the history of Kentucky, but you're not getting one right now, baby. <laughs> What a great job understanding the strength of a team and understanding what you must shut down. That, my friends, is coaching. Remember, we were tied at halftime, 45-45, and then UMass went on an 11-1 run, and here they are within a minute of upsetting the number one team in the country. What an amazing performance here by this Massachusetts team. Rick Pitino knows if they lose this game, it's a great wake-up call for his kids. It's not a disaster. This is not college football where it's a disaster if you lose that game early or lose to any, like Ohio State, for example, has a brilliant year, has one bad performance, and a dream of a national championship is out of the way. That's why, Brad, college basketball is light years ahead of football. Well, you've got your tournament to come back and prove the so-called expert wrong. Free throws tonight, UMass is taking care of business. And they continue to. Travieso, all his points came in the first half until just now. But what a whale of a floor game. He and his backcourt mate, Edgar Padilla, have had. Second one comes off, and Kentucky will have possession with now. One minute left in the ball game. Walker, three is a brick. And he follows the miss by X. Walker up on the glass. Trying to get the full court pressure. Trying to get the quick steal. If it's not there, he got a foul. Five-point game. And there's the foul. And they foul Dingle. He shot 50% tonight from the free throw line. Calipari now has become certainly one of the stars in the coaching fraternity. Every position that opened up anywhere it seemed like in the last year his name was always in there somewhere he's interviewed right down here in detroit he's interviewed for this job he probably made a great choice in bringing in doug collins unlike i guess the past year though john actually listened to some of that as the other years maybe a little more in the uh, rumor mill area and not so much that he was interested Dingle. Two big free throws. 19 points for Dingle. What a second half he's had. Yeah, he's made some big, big plays here in the second half when they needed him. Epps way short on the three. Ball loose. Tony Elk will come up with it. With 40 seconds left. Mercer for three. That one's way off. 
Up close. Padilla comes out of the pile with it. We'll want to pull it out. Oh, what a smart play. What a smart play. And then a foul on Walker. What a smart play. I'll tell you, that bus has got to get warmed up. That bus has got to get warmed up, Mr. Bus Driver. Head back to Lexington and regroup. Four NCAAs and two NITs since he showed up because the seven years before him, not much to talk about the seven years with him. Well, it looks like number 159 is going to be a dandy. And they got a facility now that they pack. Everybody's excited about college hoops and Amherst. He won four consecutive Atlantic 10 championships, both in the tournament as well as in the regular season. I can't wait to get up. I've never done a game yet. I'm going to be doing it again. I'm sorry, Davey Odom. Old Davey Odom could be in trouble. I'm doing Mass's game against Wake Forest. I did the Carolina game, the Arkansas game, and the Kentucky. I'm three for three against number one. Outside Walker. And can be another rebound. I tell you, he said I'm going to be an All-American tonight. No, he was not an All-American. He was All-Universe tonight. 30 points, 9 rebounds, 5 block shots. And I think it goes without saying that our direct TV player of the game is Marcus Campbell. Well, you don't have to go to Harvard. No. Our guys were asking us, they said, who do you think's going to be player of the game? I said, guys, even a dummy like me, I mean, you don't have to go to Harvard to figure out it's got to be Mr. Camby. <laughs> 31. Preseason Atlantic 10 pick for player of the year by most people's opinion, and I think he fits the bill. Well, Kentucky's got a date now with Indiana. What a first week of the season. You find out a little bit about your club playing Maryland, Massachusetts, and Indiana. X way off. It's the desperation three. Bright's going to do it himself. Oh, he missed the jam. About the only thing that's gone wrong here in the last couple of seconds in the foul on Tony Delk. And finally a smile on Travioso and Padilla's face. I mean, those kids have played every minute. Well, it was overtime over North Carolina, 91 to 86 last year. The tip-off classic, 104-80 over Arkansas. And another number one is about to go by the wayside, courtesy of the Minutemen, as they're seven seconds away from picking off top-ranked Kentucky. I remember one year when Connecticut went down to Virginia and blew them out by about 45 or 50. I mean, really humiliated. And yet Virginia came back and had a great year. I mean, you could take it to the bank. Kentucky's going to have a super year this year. Indiana's another club. They got blown out by Connecticut. You could always rest assured Bobby Knight will regroup that basketball team. Look at Cammy right now. He should go up and sell some popcorn now. It's all. He's done everything else. I think Marcus tonight has said, okay, I know we lost our captain, Derek Kellogg, and we lost the great All-American, Lou Rowe, but I'm here now, and I'll help take us to wherever we're going to go. Well, they got a date now with Maryland, and that's certainly not going to be easy. Maryland had a tough time with Towson State, but they certainly played Kentucky really tough, and you know, emotionally, they'll be ready to look hey, at how about this Padilla and Travieso, did they play their box off tonight? They earned their scholarship. And Dante Bright's going to check out. And that coaching staff at Calipari deserves a hand as well. Bruce Flint does a great job, and he's got a new assistant, Ed Schilling, who's outstanding, as well as another young man that does a great job as well. And Travieso now will sit. You saw Padilla come out, and uh, I'd hug this guy, too. Right? Oh, look at the hug. Look at the hug and the squeeze. I love you, Edgar. Thank you, Edgar. One of four players in double figures for UMass as Walker scores. And it's meaningless. And it's all over. The number one team in the country has been shocked here at the Direct TV Great 8 tournament in our nightcap. UMass has done it again, and they do it by 10 over the Wildcats of Kentucky. For Dan Bonner and Dick Vitale, Brad Nessler saying so long from the Palace at Auburn Hills. See you again tomorrow night for two more. Sports Center is next.